Electronic speed controllers have always seemed to work by some kind of magic to me. How does a tiny box of electronics take my battery voltage and then through three wires make my brushless motor turn? I needed to know how these things work so I could understand how to use them better on my Beast RC speed car. Today, in part four of my series on motors, I'm going to turn this magic from a mystery into something we hopefully understand. Then I'm going to go back to my list of questions from part one. Is it better to have a censored or sensorless power system? And if you don't want to run at full power, is it better to run at high voltage and limit the throttle or a lower voltage and not limit the throttle? I'm going to use my oscilloscope from earlier to find out what's going on inside an electronic speed controller. I connected the oscilloscope across two of the motor wires where they connected to the speed controller. So similar to what I did in part one of the series where I was measuring what was going on in one of the motor's phases. So here's what I measured from that at full throttle and maximum RPM. And it looks kind of similar to the back EMF plot from before with this sort of rough sine wave shape. But actually this is a combination of two curves. So one of those is from the motor and it is the back EMF curve. So that's what I've shown here in red. And it follows what we've got there quite closely, but then there's this other little bit going on here at the peaks. That actually comes from the electronic speed controller. So this is what we're getting from the speed controller. It turns on the battery voltage, then it turns it off, then it turns it on again, but in inverted, so it goes in the negative direction, off again, and then and so on, in sequence with the motor's rotation. So how does that actually cause the motor to turn? So this is what is happening as the motor is accelerating. So the um, back EMF curve is, is going to be lower than it, it was in my measured plot because the motor hasn't reached that full RPM yet. So when the speed controller curve is applied, this step profile, we get a voltage difference between the peaks of the back EMF and the applied voltage from the speed controller current is then generated through the phase of the motor which generates torque and that torque causes the motor to turn faster. Then as it turns faster the back EMF gets higher until it reaches the same voltage as the applied voltage by the speed controller and the motor stops accelerating. So that's where we've got to with our measured plot. And just as a bit of a reminder this is what I showed in part one. So this shows how as the motor RPM increases, the back EMF increases until it reaches the battery voltage and the motor stops accelerating. So I'm just reminding again how what I mentioned in part one it actually is referring to these sine wave shape curves that, that um, are generated by the motor phase. This is where we are then. So th this is at maximum RPM where our applied voltage equals the, the um, back EMF. And from what we've measured and seen with these curves, we, we've learnt two things. The speed controller is switching the battery voltage on, then off, and then on again in the opposite direction. And it does that in sync with the motor's rotation to allow it to build up that current in the phase and cause it to turn. So it must know some way, you know, it must have some way of knowing when to switch those um, voltages on and, and off as the motor rotates. Because otherwise, as it, as it goes faster, it would go out of sync, wouldn't it? Let's tackle the switching part of that first. Here's a simplified diagram of an electronic speed controller. Inside it, you can see six switches connected between the battery positive and negative terminals and the three motor phase connections there, A, B and C. So these switches are called MOSFETs, metal oxide semiconductor field effect transistors, a bit of a tongue twister. So by switching these switches on and off in a certain way, which, can, which is controlled by the computer part of the speed controller, this microprocessor, they can produce that stepped and reversing voltage applied to each phase of the motor. And to be honest, I still, even with this diagram, I still didn't really understand how it actually achieved that. So I built up a simple circuit in a simulation tool to have a play with and 
see it for myself. So I'm just going to show that now. Yeah, so I'll start by adding our battery in, and then I'm going to add four switches in. I'm not, I'm not going to do the full six because I, I'm only interested in what's going on across one of the motor phases to keep things a bit more simple. So I'll put my switches in. Now I've got to link it all up with wires, which is pretty straightforward. I'll probably fast forward this bit. So that's our set of switches set up. Now we're going to attach our motor phase. I'm going to use this resistor as our motor phase. So let's hook it up to the wire. We're going to hook it up to the bit in between each set of switches. So it goes from there to there and there to there. And then we're going to add a voltmeter in. So we measure the voltage across across our load there, the, the phase, and also the current in the phase. So let, let's do that. So we've got voltage and current measured there. And now we're ready to have a play with the switches. So to apply a positive voltage, let me just, let me, I, I don't know, I can't, work, I can't work out which way around it, so let's just try it. So I know I've got to switch that one there and that one there. So that's actually a negative. Uh, let's add, add a little arrows there. So you can see that the, these arrows represent the current flow and the current's flowing through the battery in a sort of clockwise direction and it's going from left to right in our phase there and we're showing a negative 9 volts. If I disconnect one of these we're back to 0 volts and then if I connect the switches that one and that one this time we get a positive 9 volts. And interestingly, the current's flowing the same direction through the battery, which it's got to because that's that's the only way it can run through the battery. Um, but it's running the opposite direction through the phase, so it's going from right to left now. And whichever combination we do it in, we get the same current of 0.9 amps. And then if it also shows that if you get if the speed controller gets this wrong and switches this one here, then it's going to cause a problem. I really like how this uh, this um, tool does this. It's yeah, it doesn't just have a fit. It actually shows you what's going to happen. You know, it's going to cause a fire basically. So yeah, there's there's various ways in which it can go wrong. So that's another way there. So. The speed, the speed control has got to be very careful to only allow the current to flow through one path at a time by timing these switches correctly. So while I was researching this and looking for that um, circuit analysis tool, I found this nice animation that shows how that stepped switching actually results in the motor turning. Um, and it's, this shows how at any point in time, two of the motor's phases are energised, but interestingly, they're, they're energised, you know, say we look at one of these phases, it's energised in alternate directions, so it's energised in a north direction there, which attracts that south pole of the rotor, and then it's energised in the south direction, so it attracts the north pole and repels the south pole. Um, so at any point in time, two out of the three are energised, and they are energised in alternate directions to help the rotor rotate. What I've shown so far is what happens when we're asking for 100% throttle from the electronic speed controller. But we don't always want that, so how do we reduce the applied throttle with only the same set of switches that you've just seen? So let's go back to my oscilloscope measurements. Um, at a constant speed again, but with a lower throttle. So this is what we had before. So we can see that the peaks of voltage are still the same, you know, because our switching's just switching the battery voltage on and then off in the negative direction as it was before. But what the difference is here is that it's sort of pulsing the voltage. It turns it on here, then off on and off, on and off, with, you know, within the same peak. The result of that is that the average peak is actually less than it was before. 
Um, and then because of that, the back EMF reaches the, that applied voltage earlier than it did before, so the motor turns slower. So the battery voltage has been modulated by switching it at high frequency. And I actually measured the frequency of switching in, in this measurement here, and it's actually 20 kilohertz. This method of modulating the voltage is called PWM, or pulse width modulation. And that 20 kilohertz is the PWM frequency that the speed controller is using. You might have seen that in your speed controller settings. So 20 kilohertz just means that it's switching the voltage on and off up to 20,000 times per second. Another mystery solved. Let's go back to the question of how the speed controller knows how to keep the switching in sequence with the rotation of the motor. There's actually two ways that it can achieve this. One of those is a sensor configuration where there's basically a position sensor on the rotor of the motor um, that tells the speed controller what position it's in at any point in time. That obviously makes it quite easy for the speed controller to apply the switching at the correct time. But you need more equipment, don't you? You need a sensor in the motor, you need a wire connecting the motor and the speed controller to give that information to it. So there's ways that that could potentially go wrong. So the simpler way of doing it is called sensorless. Um, and the way that works is by taking that one phase that's always not energized that we saw when we were looking at the animation and measuring the voltage um, from that phase. And by doing that, you measure the back EMF voltage and how it varies, and in particular, when it crosses zero volts. The speed controller can use that point then to trigger when it's gonna flick those switches and energize that phase. So it, the, it can then know the position of the rotor and keep the switching in sync. The problem with this though, is that the motor needs to be turning for it to work. So what I decided to do was take one of my RC cars and try it with censored and sensorless configurations to see if I could actually notice any difference. And that's what this video in the background is showing. So firstly, I tried the censored configuration and that, well, that's just the standard setup for this car. And I could get it to move quite smoothly from a standstill, but the difficulty was really just applying a low enough throttle to, to actually no, be able to notice a difference. So having tried the sensor configuration, I then unplugged the sensor lead. So the speed controller just went into sensorless operation. And I, re, I tried it again and I couldn't really notice a great deal of difference. I think there was, a, there was a very slight difference in how smooth it was in the censored configuration, but it was actually quite subtle. Um, so for this type of car, I found it didn't really make a lot of difference. I think for rock crawlers perhaps, and bigger, heavier vehicles, it might make more of a difference, but certainly the difference is only really in the first bit of movement away from the standstill. So there we've seen what the difference is between censored and sensorless electronic speed controllers. Now for the second question, which goes back to my initial runs of my Beast RC speed car, where I didn't want to run it at full speed to shake it down. Should I have run it on the full voltage of 12S and limited the throttle? Or should I have run it on 6S and given it full throttle? As we've seen, to apply a lower voltage to the motor than the battery voltage, the electronic speed controller has to modulate it by switching at high frequency. The higher the battery voltage applied, more strain is put on the MOSFETs as they do that switching, so there's more chance of damaging them. Also, there's more potential for damagingly high motor currents at low RPMs if too much throttle opening is applied because of that larger achievable voltage difference. So it turns out it's actually better to reduce the battery voltage by running on less cells if you don't want to use all of your powertrain's capabilities. I hope what you've seen today was useful for you. Please like, comment and subscribe if it, if it was. Um, and keep an eye out for part five, where having learnt about how brushless motors and electronic speed controllers work, I'm gonna dive into why I had the problems I experienced last year with my Beast Car powertrain. Thanks again and see you in the next one.